Yep, so my name is Hayford from Ghana. My question goes to the second presenter. I guess that's uh, Sonia. Sorry, Dante. A chilly presentation. Um, I want to find out a bit curious about the curriculum that I used in the different, you mentioned the public, the virtual section, and then also you also mentioned the private paid. I want to know whether it's the same curriculum, because you are comparing performance. Is it the same curriculum that is used across board? Then you also indicate that you have data on family characteristics, family background, and I want to know who are those who actually send the awards to which of the categories of the schools that you are looking at? So is it the people who work in a private, paid, uh, private sector who prefer to send the awards to you know, the private paid, or you have a mixture of those depending on the region someone may find his or herself in? Hi, um, I had questions for the last presentation. Um, I, um, I was not clear on the uh, interpretation of the sex of the child variable. It was negative in the first regressions, um, which meant that uh, boys uh, gained less. Or um, So if you could clarify that. Then, um, so how do you, um, or you said in the last slide that you plan to uh, differentiate between uh, the impact of user fees versus the impact of, uh, say, in a society if um, the importance of education has Im increased and hence uh, people uh, are sending children to schools more. Uh, so uh, as well as there's also impact of having more schools in the neighborhood because government programs might have increased the schools. So how do you differentiate between, uh, say, these three impacts or other impacts from the user fees uh, impact? Um, and lastly, um, do you have a sense of, uh, does economic status of the household have an uh, impact on uh, your results? Thank you. Michael. Very quick questions. So first question is um, to Liliana. You didn't mention the problem of tax evasion, so is that something that uh, seriously affects the quality of your data in this, uh, in particular, in the upper uh, centile, in the top centile? Then one question to Dante. Um, I didn't very well understood the thing on the test scores. You, you have panel data, and then you, you say that you can identify you know, somehow a change uh, in, in test scores on the uh, earnings, or I wasn't sure about that. I mean, I think I, I saw that this is something which is measured once in your in your educational life or so, but it seems that you have repeated observations on test scores, so maybe you can just explain that a little bit. Then um, to Somia, um, you mentioned as one implication that uh, we could have a conditional cash transfer, but if we talk about health shocks, maybe it's even more obvious to think about health insurance, so I wonder whether you consider this as an option for uh, India. And then a question to uh, Kenneth. You, at the very end, you uh, discussed the effect of uh, having or not having biological parents, and you find this, uh, say, negative effect of not having the biological parents. But I wonder whether the effect that you observe is not more the effect of the shock that led to the status of an orphan than the fact that now you live with your non-biological parents. Huh? Because you say it's mainly a channel that is uh, through the transmission of education to these non-biological parents, to the children, but it could also be still the effect of the shock that led to this uh, status. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Hi, I'm Tuli from Aalto University and UNU Wider. I have a question to Liliana. Uh, I was also wondering if you could kind of uh, um, discuss a little bit like what kind of people uh, besides tax evasion might not be uh, covered in your tax filers. And also if you could, uh, you were covering the results quite quickly, so maybe you could kind of reiterate on, on what was the main result regarding the mobility among the top and perhaps some explanations what explains and in the graph that you showed there was some 
um, a, a dip in the probabilities to, to stay in there around, was it 2007 or something? So maybe you have some idea of what is, what is happening there around the, in the top, top income mob mobility. Thanks. Okay, maybe let's have uh, the uh, uh, response and then we'll go to another round. Can I ask a question later? You want also to ask a question? Okay, uh, maybe let's have the, the, the quick response and then you'll be the first one to ask the question. So, Liliana, you go first. Okay. Uh, for the first question about tax uh, deduction, um, uh, for, for the top, when, when we control the top of uh, uh, top series, we control by, by, uh, by control variable of total income on top of that population. Uh, to avoid this problem. So uh, series for the top are related to a total uh, full population, um, total full income. It's the methodology was proposed uh, by, by Piquet. It's not, top income series are not construct relative to the tax filing population, are construct relative to a control, control uh, total income and control total population. But I am not uh, able to, to use, to follow the same methodology for the entire uh, distribution, tax distribution. Because well, as, as I said, if I use control variables of total income and total uh, population, I only able to capture, for instance, in 2011, 25% of potential tax uh, units. So for the total, uh, I, I don't have problem of evasion. But then for wh when I use tax, uh, the entire tax uh, database, I, I focus most in the middle of the, of the distribution because I know that the bottom, there will be problems of evasion for the bottom of the distribution. But I think that tax data, tax data provides a better picture of the middle and of the, of the top of the distribution because we have all former employers who are there or, or people who are required to keep an account in books uh, and self-employment are, are there. So I think that provides a better picture of the middle and, 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 and the top of the distribution. For the bottom, that's why I'm not, I, I'm not making an analysis for the bottom because I think that for the bottom it's better works with the household surface. And um, for uh, the second question, um, very quickly, the result is that uh, we have uh, mobility at the top is very low. The probability of staying uh, people who are in the top is almost 60% at the end of the period. Uh, for the middle of the distribution, we find uh, that people are moving up over different periods of time. Almost 80% uh, of people who are in the fourth, uh, in this diesel four, diesel five, are moving to a uh, higher income groups. And um, also for the top, uh, when peop if people who are in the top are more likely to drop to the top 5% than to drop to the bottom uh, 90, 95%. So people, if, if people in the top move, they just stay in, 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 on the top. Um, uh, and then the probability of decline. Um, I, I, am, I, am, I actually analyze this, this subject because in that year there will be, um, there, there was, uh, uh, there will be um, a tax um, um, reform, a tax reform, so maybe, the, maybe this is a response to, to this tax reform. Maybe, so <laughs> I'm not sure of that. And, and, and then the f finally, uh, uh, I find that the people who, are, who hold a, an academic degree are more likely to experience upward movements than downward move movements, especially those people who are in the middle of the distribution and who hold an ac academic degree.
So I didn't present this because it's in Spanish, but it's going to be useful in order to answer, I think, both of the questions that I, I received. So uh, the main story of this paper is you have, I mean, we have many test scores for children. Okay, we are using this one, this one here. All right. So we are able to control using this test score the future of these guys. Okay, uh, connecting the data with label market output. But the story is the following. The blue one is, I mean, this is actual uh, test score gaps between public school, voucher school, and private high school. So there is a significant gap here. If you follow the same guy over time, I mean, during the whole educational process, the gaps remain. Okay? So we're using this, and we're using this, but now we're collecting all the test score in order to model the, the whole life cycle. The point of the paper is that the inequality in education is transmitted to the inequality in income. Okay? There's no significant gap between people attending public school and voucher school, but it's, there is a huge gap between these two guys and this group. You see? And the final important issue is that when you compare ch child when they're born, they are quite similar. So now the question is why people <coughs> do not you know, place their children in this type of school because they are so expensive. So you are rich, you are going to follow this path of, rich, of uh, you're going to be wealthy in the future, but if you are poor, you're going to follow this one. So inequality remains. That's the big question and issue. So it's not related to curriculum, okay? I mean, curriculum is quite the same in this in all the schools, I mean, there is a minimum curriculum in the country, and every school has to, uh, um, you know, uh, educate the, guy, the, the kids with this kind of curriculum. The main difference are infrastructure, quality of the teachers, and social capital of the families. So that's explained the gap over time, right? question is on why not explore the options of health insurance. Actually, I, um, uh, Andhra Pradesh government has a health insurance scheme. It covers almost 80% of the population. And even in my survey, 80% of the households are covered under the state health insurance scheme. In my, in my previous paper, I found that the health insurance scheme does not have a significant effect in reducing the uh, coping strategies like borrowing, sale of assets, and so on. Uh, this I think this why this is mainly happening is maybe the indirect costs are more than the direct costs. In that case, when there is a loss of income, even if there is health insurance, the families are anyways going to send the children to school. So that is what maybe is driving my results. I had also used health insurance as an explanatory variable, but I did not find anything. Thank you. Okay, again. First, uh, with respect to the sex of the child, so it, uh, it's true that for this particular model and for this age group, uh, boys seem to have less education than girls. This sometimes changed over our models. For example, if you looked at the impact of the father's education or of the household head's education, so this is not consistent across all the samples, but I forgot to mention this. Um, and uh, we also looked at the socioeconomic status of the household. Unfortunately, the DHS does not contain any information on income, but we looked at uh, assets. Uh, um, but um, this is, of course, also uh, correlated with the education of the mothers and fathers. So in this model, we wanted to show you the uh, model without the socioeconomic status, but only the pure effect of um, the, the sole effect of the mother's education without controlling for these other, other effects. And could you uh, please um, um, repeat your second uh, uh, question again? I did not get it fully. Uh, so the question is, um, there are several impacts on uh, why the child's education should, would have improved. Uh, it mm -hmm. might be that the society, uh, there's more uh, awareness in the society about education, or um, there's more supply of schools. 
Or yes. one of the reasons which you are exploring is user fees. So how do you um, plan to differentiate between these impacts? Ah, okay. Um, good question. So far we bypassed all these uh, issues. So we planned to also study the impact of uh, uh, the introduction on, of user fees on enrollment rates. However, then we need to look at different age groups, uh, of course, but we have no country information on all these other effects since we are doing cross-country uh, comparison. So um, it's a good point, but we bypass this at the moment, and, um, but we should take this into account in our discussion. Thanks. And uh, Michael, just to clarify, so we found a positive impact of the non-biological parents on education, but it was lower than for the biological parents. It was not negative. And um, the reason that it is negative, of course, can be simply due to the shock uh, 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 children lost their parents. However, this is a bit mitigated because we looked at children at older age groups, so 15 to 18, and to take your point into account, we should look at what happens actually if children uh, lose their uh, parents uh, with respect to enrollment uh, of children. So and if we find a, we should find a significant impact on this, then we can take this discussion into a, uh, account when interpreting uh, these results of transmission of these non-biological education, uh, not biological parents education on their uh, non-biological children. But it, uh, you are right. It's lower. Exactly, but I so I guess that the effect should be much higher for enrollment than for actually achievement for these older uh, age groups. But of course, drops in enrollment rates are then translated in this, uh, into these uh, limited uh, achievements. Now. Thank you. We have uh, 10 minutes. We can have another short round uh, of uh, questions. Uh, Dante, you wanted to ask your colleagues a question. We'll start with you. <laughs> yeah, I have a question for Liliana as well. Uh, I mean, when we compare, uh, uh, as you mentioned, the, the probability of staying in the top 1% is about 60%. How comparable is this one with the other countries in which we have data on that? And the second question is, um, the Again, with this idea of uh, mobility in the middle class, according to the World Bank in Latin America, uh, middle class is, high, is highly vulnerable in the sense that we can move forward, as you mentioned in your presentation, but also going downwards. Yeah. So there is a lot of fluctuation there according to the, the, the World Bank in Latin America. So how you reconcile your data with the, this evidence from the World Bank? Um, for the last presentation, I have one conceptual question and one empirical one. The, the theoretical one is, when we talk about or we discuss about the intergenerational transmission of education, uh, we might think not only in terms of quantity of education or year of education, but also the quality of such education. So the, your paper is just about quantity, right? And I believe that uh, for the future, I guess, uh, not only quantity is, <laughs> is relevant, but also the quality. For instance, six years of education in Finland is equivalent to 10 years of education in Chile. So <laughs> that gap is quite significant. So uh, and that's the, the first one. And the second, uh, related to your question as well, I, I think, uh, you mentioned that there is a positive relationship between mother education and child education, right? And then free education is positively correlated with that. And then the interaction is negative. So can you elaborate a little bit more about that? I mean, is a, I, because you are controlling for fixed effect for country level and everything, so I, I cannot follow how come you got, you got this negative interaction coefficient. Thank you. Uh, more questions from the floor? Oh, okay, you have a question? I have a comment. 
Yeah, Dante. Actually, my comment is uh, he showed that the he took the sample and he showed that there was a lot of attrition due to zero data. So I w and then you were comparing the means before the sa before the attrition and after right. the attrition. So in that case, I would suggest you to uh, do a regression and show that the, the certain characteristics of these are not being uh, because that gives credibility to your story. That's okay. Um, more questions from the floor? Yeah, there's two more. No? Okay, so. Okay, <coughs> uh, you try to respond to some of the questions raised and then. Um, of the saying at the top of the income distribution, there, is, there are not empirical evidence for uh, South American countries. Uh, at least, uh, uh, you know, first, uh, this, this uh, literature on top incomes is very, very recent. And, but I find um, more or less the same result for the probability of staying at the top for countries like uh, uh, France, uh, Canada, and uh, uh, Germany. In France, in Canada, and Germany, the probability of staying at the top of the distribution is also almost 60% after uh, one, one, year, uh, one year after. So uh, we find more or less the same results. I cannot, I am not able to make a cooperation to South American countries because the, the, there are not empirical evidence on top income uh, 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 probabilities. And then uh, concerning the vulner vulnerability of the middle class, I, um, in the paper, in, 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 in the last part of the paper, I made an, an analyze uh, regarding uh, tax data and household survey, and I, um, I compute in uh, absolute terms uh, the middle class using tax data. So for, for instance, if I take uh, people who hold an um, income uh, of 10, uh, between $10 and $50, which is actually what uh, is proposed by, 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 by the World Bank uh, to people who hold uh, this, 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 um, uh, this amount of, 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 of income are considered a, a middle, uh, belonging to the middle class. And if I, I made the same thing to the database, uh, it corresponds more or less to the decil three, uh, to the uh, to decil nine. So in my database, people who hold an income of ten dollars and fifty dollars stays uh, between uh, decil three and, and decil uh, ten. So that's why I always, I, I that's why I focus on on, on on the middle decils, so I can identify middle class uh, in absolute terms also. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, I think you are totally right with respect to the comment or question on the quantity versus quality issue. We really would love to have information on quality of schooling for cross countries in, in uh, Africa and in other developing regions, but in this data set, unfortunately, there's com no information on quality of schooling, but it's a valid point. It's discussed in the literature, it's discussed in our paper, and it's also discussed whenever uh, 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 someone uses the DHS to analyze uh, 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 um, dynamics in education in developing countries. So, I mean, there are fortunately some countries that now have made uh, information on test scores in schooling uh, available, so Kenya, for example, and it's a good point to take these data on board and try for uh, a couple of country cases to find uh, whether there's an effect on intergenerational transmission on mother's education, on actual outcomes with respect to quality of education, but so far we are not able to do it because of data limitations. And uh, regarding your second point, with mm, the negative effect of the interaction term, so uh, we found in impact of 0 0.5 years of schooling for mothers with no education and then with each additional year of uh, schooling of the mother with respect to none, this drops by 0 0.08. So first of all, well-educated parents are not affected by school fees. And now this means that um, once school fees are introduced, 
less educated parents uh, uh, benefits more benefit more from the introduction of these prim primary education than uh, better educa uh, educated uh, uh, parents. However, the overall effect remains uh, uh, positive, positive. And so even for mothers with 12 years of education, the total effect with uh, uh, free primary education and the interaction term is about uh, uh, four years of schooling. So we di uh, did find that we can improve the distribution of education and um, we also find that even for mothers that have a lot of years of schooling, we uh, can be quite sure that there is an effect, a positive effect of free primary education at all, so that uh, we can argue that there is a widespread political support when it comes to the discussion of free primary education. Okay. No, I fully agree with you. I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's, uh, it wasn't in the presentation, but it's in the paper. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, come to the end of the session with a two or three minutes uh, bonus. So allow me to thank uh, all the presenters and yourself, of course, for uh, your active participation. So let's clap. Uh,